Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Andres Salazar, here on The Art of Comics, where we talk about comic books, graphic novels, we do deep dives, we analyze comics. I am a comic book writer, creator, artist. I love these things, and I'm so excited to talk to you about Shawa, the Japanese history by Shingeru Mizuki. Um, there are four of these books, and I have the first two. I read this book yesterday. I spent all day and night and I read this whole thing and it was a great experience. It really is wonderful to when you can get away to just read and read and be able to kind of consume a large quantity of something. Like people do binging, right? Binging Netflix, right? But now I'm binging a freaking book and it's history. It's the history of Japan. And it's got manga in it. I'm a manga fan. And uh, Mizuki is considered one of the greatest mangakas ever. He is, he's in the pantheon. He's the Jack Kirby. He's the guy there that did all the stuff with yokai, the supernatural stuff. He um, has gotten tons of awards from Angolim, Eisner's. Shinjiro has won everything, deservedly so. And this was just such a delight to read this. I'm super excited to talk to you about it. Um, and we're going to do a deep dive, and I'll turn the camera over and we'll go into that details. But first, before we do that, just a few just highlights. This is a series of four books, four of these tomes. And it's called Showa, A History of Japan. And Showa is kind of like an era or a, or a, a period of time. And so... Um, in these books, they cover the spans of history of his life as well as Japanese history. The first one is 1926 to 39, which, as you know, is the beginning of World War II. And then 39 through 44, which would be the war. And then there's two more after that. And I think it ends in like the late 80s is like the last, the last book. Um, and uh, just reading and thinking about this book now, it's got parallel things going on. It's got the history of Japan, and it's very historical. It's accurate, it's, it's, um, it's detailed, it's got a lot of Japanese names and figures and people and historical facts and dates. And so, um, me being a gaijin, you know, okotaku fan, sometimes the names are hard to remember, and who's that, is Wanatabi this guy? And, Who's Mitsubishi, this guy? And so you have to kind of like remember those names at times. It's a little challenging. Um, but at the same time as the history, you also have his personal journey, right? So we kind of go back between his personal journey. Uh, and it's very autobiographical. It's him as a child. This first book is really about him as a child up to like young adulthood, uh, like looking for a job, you know, early 20s. And we get to see his family, his father, upbringing, all those kind of like fun things that we see, you know, in other autobiographical books like one of my favorites, Blankets. I always talk about Blankets because it's great. And uh, even the book I'm working on has got that autobiographical like element. So uh, you do have that coming of age, uh, fun little stories mixed into very uh, factual elements of history. So as far as the themes go, when we talk about themes, um, in a way, it's about a boy, a man, finding his place and a country finding their place in the world. And the country of Japan's relations in her, uh, globally with China, Manchuria, Mongolia, uh, French Indonesia, China, all these like, you know, places, um, and there, those conflicts and those relationships and it's kind of place in the world as, you know, is it the leader of Asia or not? Or is there this alliance between nations and that very similar to him and his life as far as uh, him being a leader or not and him finding his place in life with finding a job and he wants to be an artist, but clearly that's a hard gig. And, um, it's really good. I won't say it's for everybody. 
I will say that if you're not a fan of history and you want more of just a autobiographical story or kind of a fun, light story, I would say this is not for you. This is heavy history. This is, uh, you know, the fun stuff is sprinkled in there, but you'll start, your eyes will glaze if the history is like kind of troublesome. You'll just be like, oh, but, you know, so it's got, it got that history element. But see, I like that. I'm a history nerd. So this to me was right up my alley. Plus I'm a nerd for, you know, Jap Japanese stuff. So a double whammy on me. Um, why don't we turn the camera around? Let's look at this and then we can kind of like talk about some things. It's not a perfect book. So I will try to put on my, my critical lenses here and try to figure this out. Let's go check it out right now. Okie dokie guys, here we are. I'm excited dude. I'm excited dude and dudettes about this because uh, these are so good. Oh, I forgot to say who publishes this. My bad. This is Drawn and Quarterly. Uh, Drawn and Quarterly are one of my faves. So you guys know I like Fanographics. I talk about Fanographics. I like Drawn and Quarterly. They're the ones, when I go to Comic-Con, the booths I always go to, I'm gonna go to Fanographics, I'm gonna go to Drawn and Quarterly because they put out great stuff. So I'm a fan of them. And uh, this is another example of them um, really translating and kind of bringing this to the Americas because um, there's just great stuff out there in the world that we just don't find unless they give it to us. So there you go. Uh, that's my plug for them. And it's 25 bucks, which I feel is actually pretty good value. I mean, I know it is what it is, but um, you know, this compare, this is, this is good. This is dense. This is thick and full. And I feel like um, it's, it's meaty. It's worth it. Okay. So we're not gonna talk about this one because I haven't finished it. I'm actually just about the yay big. Uh, from last night, but I did finish this. So let's just just kind of go through this and First off, this is a really great like design. I really like this three color uh, Jacket little design here um, Some wonderful art pieces This if there's one thing this book teaches me is that you really can jump between different art styles and finishing looks within the same story. And he does that. He does it remarkably well. And uh, so I, I was really kind of excited to see that. So we're gonna start off, starting off with this huge earthquake and um, that just kind of like decimated uh, the country financially and economically. And if you just look at these, beautiful, beautiful, almost like lithographic style, etching-like style uh, ink work, pen work, just brilliant stuff, heavy detail. I love the way these blacks come in here. Uh, he didn't spot these blacks. These are blacks because of the number of lines are creating, are making these blacks. It's just beautiful. It's perfect for black and white. It is wonderful. So he's done, he does a lot of different techniques. One is these heavily rendered, almost photorealistic kind of stuff. And there are times when he must be using photographs. He must be using photographs. Now, I don't know if he is using a light box. You know, remember this was done, this is before digital, right? So he's, I don't know if he's using light box or some sort of projection or freehand or what, but there are scenes, a lot of the historical moments He's using a reference, no doubt. I don't have a doubt in that one. And then he brings in his personal story. All his personal story is a more simplified manga, you know, manga styled art, and but with highly detailed backgrounds. So he keeps the backgrounds really detailed and realistic with these cartoonish car caricatures of people. Right, um, so this is like going through like the this big um, you know disaster relief and what's going to happen to the country. But look at this! I remember this panel here. By the way, I do love the way these panel bubbles kind of come in. It's very kind of fun. These organic ways of moving across the page, and I just love this this here. The hats 
Look at all these wonderful hats, just the rendering of this stuff. He is brilliant. And then we go into here, a little more, you know, this is, again, that kind of cartoonish look. But then he goes back into this. Wonderful stuff. And then we get a little bit more um, simplified versions. So we have this uh, throughout the story. They're, they're broken up into little chunks of, I'd say, maybe 20 pages each or so, 20, 15 pages, and then these little, like, chapters. I think these were originally published in, like, uh, one of those Kadansha books or Shonen books. And then now here's an example of here. This is what I was talking about. He's got highly detailed pointillism. I don't know if you can even see the, the amount of work this is, but... I mean, this page alone took hours and hours to do all the wood grain, all the stone, all this is, pens, you know, pointillismed out with rapidograph or something. Uh, he did all this by hand, and then he puts this very simplistic kind of character of him. Now, this idea, we see this also in A Good Night Pun Pun. So there's a, there's a modern manga, that was out maybe 10 years ago, called Good Night Pun Pun, which uses this technique to where hyper-realized uh, drawings with very simplistic kind of character placed in there, uh, which is a little like juxtaposition, right? It makes him look really simple and it makes this look heavily detailed uh, when you have that, but it's kind of fun. So we get to meet him as a little baby boy and uh, we talk about him eating everything and he was, uh, he was, a, he was a crazy kid. He ate everything got into fights he beat people up all the time he was a tough little little brat uh i think he was the young he's either the youngest or the middle kid and uh, he was a bit of a troublemaker that's his grandma which he loves and stuff so then we go you know we have this kind of fun little moments and then boom we're back to now the taisho era right so it only lasts a couple years this is the taisho democracy this is the emperor we see this like the almost great Gatsby type of like, you know, cars and, and the elite, social elite coming. We talk about her father, his father, you know, loved the arts. And uh, we get to see some, again, very fascinating how he's, he switches between, you know, realistic etching type of drawings and then these little like quick little sketches. Talking about the arts, we won't go into the story. I just wanted to show you like some of these these pages I think are kind of fascinating. Um, this is him reading to his kids. But then again, again, you got these little moments here. Again, it's the rendering here that is just really fabulous. Um, so, and I, okay, another thing we're gonna say too. So, most of these pages, it's two images each, okay? And they are static. They're static illustrations. And it's like, here's an image, here's an image, here's an image, here's an image. And that's, a lot of it is like that. Not the whole thing, you know, but a lot of it is static image, static image. When we're talking the history, the issue with that is it's not the best communicator of a you know fluid story with movement and such okay it is like plates it's like photographs in a history book you don't have this flowing storytelling you know thing we think of when we talk about comics there's not like a shot of this big and then a close-up and then a close-up and then we get his hand moving on the sword and then we get another shot of this and there's none of that it's just boom 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 history 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 right and then we get to him and then we get his little story he's taught thinking about boats how they should go up mountains instead of the water right and then we talk about the the grandma a little bit we do some of the story with his life, being a little kid, and then we go back to now, you know, the history. Boom, boom, and then we go. So, so that's, I guess that's the one issue I would say is that when he's doing this stuff, when he's doing the autobiographical storytelling of his life, 
It's hitting on all cylinders. And when he's doing the historical stuff, it looks great, but it's not necessarily, you know, like this and this. It's not necessarily like, it's just illustrations. They're beautiful. They're, they're very well done. But my argument is that it's not, it is kind of like um, factual, but not uh, dramatic necessarily. I don't know. Maybe that's not the right word, dramatic. Because when we get into the history, there's some beautiful angles and shots within the war. Uh, again, wonderful backgrounds. Like one of the things to to just read this is to is to enjoy the art, the beautiful uh, rendering he's doing in all these. And then this fun cartooning stuff is is fun too. A lot of great little motion and kind of character and and, and fun stuff. So, so there's one thing I want to say about this. Um, when we have the transition to the history of Japan, when we leave his personal story which is the fun kind of manga, shoujin jump, you know, kind of story. And we go into these illustrations. It does become static shots. It becomes uh, some photography-like imagery where he's using an image, which he'll either, it looks like it's actual photograph that he does some like drawing on top of, or he's using a light box, or like I said, a projector or something like that. And they're beautifully rendered. They're, it's wonderfully done just from a imagery, you know, art draftsman style, no doubt about it. But there is no storytelling, movement of the page. There are static elements. They are not, it is not sequential art necessarily in the way we think of it. So that's a criticism, that's a comment. In no way is he still not a master. Mizuki is still in the Pantheon. I'm just saying that when we jump to the history, it's basically postcard style like images that he throws on there with the history of the, of the era. And then he goes back into his manga story. So there is that little bit of back and forth that at times can be a challenge, right? Um, and this is fun. I actually probably would like this more just because it's more comic, I feel. When we go into the history stuff, it's cool as an illustration, as an illustrated book, like a history book, but it's, it doesn't have the comic, you know, movement of the eye and, you know, panels coming out and zooming in and zooming out and that kind of like sequential storytelling in the page. It's just static shot, static shot. And now we get back into the comic, you know, and then we go into static shock, static shock, you know, static shock, and then we get into the comic, static shock, static shock. So this right here, beautifully rendered, right? Extremely well done, but it does feel like it's just um, images from a photograph or something like that that he's doing as he's telling the story. And maybe that's just what you have to do when your story is so massive, so many characters, and it would be a much longer story in book if we were to make these elements into kind of like the comic form. So when you're doing two things at once, he's really doing two books, the history of Japan and also the history of Shinjiro. Right, so he's doing both of these stories together in tandem, and there is that like trade-off. Either way, the backgrounds are brilliant. I mean, it's a great book to just study how you, in black and white, translate photography, or how you uh, use line to show different textures. It's beautiful. I mean, this definitely looks like a photograph there that he's like going in and playing with. Uh, and also, this is a great thing to study like characterization, cartooning, you know, exaggerated stuff. I love the little, like, the the puff of, of breath out of the nose when he's angry or something. I think that's brilliant. <laughs> um, so yeah, it goes through his life, his father, uh, all the challenges he had as a kid, uh, and, and his parents had, being poor, had, being unsuccessful in so many different uh, 
school endeavors and work and things like that. And so that is all fun. And then you get these very serious draw. I mean, Japan in these years, so far, these years, oh my gosh, so much is happening in the, the Japanese position globally and internally. The, the drama and hijinks that are happening with the ambassadors, politicians, military people, all that kind of stuff. And they go through all the, the big critical moments. I mean, he is hitting all those incidents, all those moments of potential coups and uh, strife and stuff. Now, this is another one little quibble I have. He in, we enter in this new character, which is like a narrator figure, a cartoonized, I don't know, cat ghost spirit thing in robe that will then kind of narrate the story. And he, he comes in on a page 100. He's not, he does not show up at all in here. I don't know why Shinjiro felt the need to add this, to kind of talk us through this. I was fine with the, with the, the descriptions as they did before. But for some reason, he wanted to add this character. So we have this like narrator figure. Remember these static shocks, you know? So we have these, and they're beautiful, beautifully rendered stuff. So instead of now just reading this, it's this, this spirit creature animal thing is kind of telling us this story. And here we actually have photographs. So then he'll just pop in a, a blank dangum photo. So he'll just put in a photo sometimes too. Um, this is probably my favorite story where we have the gang. That was brilliant. All these kids, they were called the Sandals and they wanted to be big kids. And so there's these battles and everything. It was really, really brilliant. So um, I like that a lot. And so this is just, this is all brilliant stuff here. And look at this, I, I love this stuff here. And I do enjoy when he's combining these great images, these great rendered kind of elements you know, boats, buildings, backgrounds, and he, and he inserting in the people and the, and the cartoon characters and things. That's just, this one is, this would be one I'd want like the poster of or something. This is great. Uh, father goes to Osaka. Yeah, his father is just a mess time after time. Uh, so there's the personal elements I really enjoy, probably more than the history even. And I'm a history fan, but the, the personal stuff is what's great. Here's another photograph I was mentioning before. He'll just pop in a photograph too. Again, I wonder if this was for time because he was like under deadline. He had to get this popped out. So I wonder if it was a time issue or what. Um, but he does kind of flip around with different things to get it done. But this, these are really, really well done. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to discuss. Again, is that character is kind of narrating all this. Not a huge fan of that, but it is what it is. Um, look at these brilliant things. Yeah, this is a great book. It really is. I hope I've sufficiently sold it, so to speak. Um, excited to read this one, and I'll get the other two, because, again, if you're a fan of history, I don't even think you have to be a fan of manga, because... It's not that manga-like, you know what I mean? It's not like crazy, it's pretty simple as far as like, it's easy to read It's uh, as far as the manga element, the Japanese elements. If, if you have not been a big manga fan, I think you would be fine. I think this is very dis, uh, digestible by us uh, Westerners. So there you go, that's Shawa. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my Patreon to see all my personal stuff. And as you know, I got videos every Tuesdays and Saturdays and at night times I do some live videos there. Uh, if you want to get the book, check out the link in the description and uh, have a good one, guys.